Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been uh, a little while since my last update and I, 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 I believe I in my last video I said I wasn't sure if I was going to make one before my surgery or not. So, uh, but today is the day before my top surgery and I thought uh, I might as well make a quick update. Yeah, quick, quick for me. <laughs> we'll see how quick it is. Uh, uh, for anyone who watches my videos, you know I ramble, so you know I apologize for that in advance. Um, but yes, so I am officially getting my top surgery tomorrow, um, and that should be the uh, last surgery I am going to get um, in terms of my transition, um, since I am opting not to do any kind of um, bottom surgery. Um, other than, you know, the, the only surgery I've had besides uh, the top surgery is the hysterectomy. And the hysterectomy was actually more just because I just wanted to get rid of that stuff than it was anything to do with my gender transition. Um, because of the testosterone, um, I was in a lot of pain. I had a lot of fibroids that developed because of the testosterone. Um, and I'd always had pain anyway. It just exasperated it. So it was finally time uh, to just kind of just take it all out. And I am so glad that I had the hysterectomy. I am feeling so much better now. I have, like, all the pain that I've had for 30-some years is all gone, finally. And, you know, I've been begging for 20 years to, to have a hysterectomy, and no doctor would do it. Um, it wasn't until I, I came out as a transgender and wanted to transition that finally doctors were uh, open to talking about it with me, uh, which is, you know, ridiculously crazy that you know, uh, that it would take that much to, uh, to, to get that hysterectomy that I needed. Um, and the fact that I'm now, like, finally pain-free, um, in that area of my body, um, I just, I could not be happier with the result of everything. It was great. And I'm hoping for, uh, the same <laughs> happiness with, uh, with the top surgery, because for, um, as long as I have had breasts, I've had pain in my breasts. Um, so yes, binding is not fun, but uh, at the same time, I, l I love how I look with the flat chest, so that uh, became a, a kind of a necessary thing, and, and my insurance did actually approve the surgery and, and uh, agree that it was medically necessary for me based on my diagnosis and everything. So uh, we are going forward with that. My insurance is, thank goodness, covering it. I know... A lot of trans guys either don't have insurance because they can't afford it or their insurance won't cover it uh, for a ver variety of reasons and things and I am ridiculously fortunate that my insurance is actually covering this. Um, considering how much money I pay for my insurance, um, you know, I, my, my monthly premium is $7.20 a month right now, uh, which is a lot of money and I know a lot of people cannot afford to pay for that so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky but at the same time, you know, I'm I'm, I'm paying a lot of money to have this insurance to begin with. I'm lucky that I can afford to pay it, though. So, you know, you know, regardless, it's one of the perks or one of the benefits of being an older trans uh, person and coming out when you're older is because you you can be more settled in your life and with your career and with your income and, and that kind of thing. Uh, at least I got, you know, really lucky with, with where my uh, finances and everything ended up with where I'm at in my life right now. I'll be 48 this year, um, and can you believe it? So when I started this YouTube channel, it was eight years ago, um, and I did it as a lark, uh, as a countdown to my 40th birthday. That's how I know it's been eight years, because <laughs> that's when I started my channel, was, was doing this big countdown to my 40th birthday, and here I am, you know, looking at um, 48 coming up in a couple weeks, and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not doing the regular videos like I used to uh, just because of, of life and everything else. And I just, you know, after uh, YouTube demonetized my channel entirely because I wasn't getting enough uh, view, uh, it was, um, it's not views. Because I, I actually, I have enough subscribers. You need at least a thousand subscribers and I have 1,400 subscribers. Um, so thank you for everyone who subscribed. I, I appreciate that. Um, but it's also view time. And even though I have really long videos, I guess most people don't watch more than a few minutes here and there or skip around or whatever, which is, you know, valid. I mean, it, I ramble. They're long videos. I understand. And I don't get, you know, that many um, hits on my videos anyway because, you know, eh. I just, I, I, I would probably have put more effort into this channel um, if I had remained monetized, especially after I retired with my business. 
Um, but since I, I don't earn a penny from this, I'm like, eh. I just, so I'm just posting videos when I feel like it, and that's it. <laughs> and that's, that's all the content you guys are going to get. Um, if you want me to have more content, watch my videos more. <laughs> Because I'm not going to get monetized again. I need like 10 times the amount of watch time um, in a year before they'll monetize me again or some ridiculous thing. It's just like, you know, uh, it, it's not even worth trying for. You know, I, I need to give every single person who's subscribed to me watching every video, you know, back to front um, for a year practically. It's like, yeah, it's it's not worth it. But that's my, you know, little, little YouTube aside there. But... I'm still here, I'm still going to make videos, it's just not going to be regular content, and it hasn't been for a long time, and it, it won't ever be regular. Um, not considering, you know, I'm, I'm really invested in my writing career now, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, I do believe I mentioned that I, I published a second book. Um, I never, I don't know if I ever made a big announcement about it, <laughs> and I probably should have, but you know, that is what it is, but I did have another one, and there's going to be links down below if you want to check out my novels and stuff and uh, check me out on Amazon and things. Uh, Mark My Soul is my newest one. Uh, it was published back in August, and it's uh, it's more of a, a BDS, it's it's a, a BDSM heavy um, gay erotic uh, romance um, with a kind of a soulmate twist to it. Um, you can uh, see the, the description on Amazon uh, and everything. If if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. Um, coming up with the holidays, I will probably try and drop the price on them and, and run some kind of a promotion or something. So uh, watch out for that um, coming up in December. Uh, so if the current price is a little steep for you, uh, it will get discounted for the holidays. Um, anyway, uh, so there's that. Um, and uh, besides that, I'm also writing more um, articles on Medium. Um, if you've never seen uh, Medium.com, it's sort of a uh, people can can join and read, uh, and you can you can subscribe for five dollars a month and read everything that's on there. And uh, if you want to contribute, um, anyone can post on Medium. You don't even have to be a paid member to. Uh, although, uh, if you want to earn money, only people who are paid members who read your articles will uh, generate money for you um, and, and and it depends on how much like the same thing like with YouTube with watch time they have read time so how much time people take to read your articles uh, gives you how much money that you earn from from the articles and stuff and it's only from people who are paid subscribers that that give you the money and stuff and but because of their subscriber model they don't have ads or they don't have very many ads it's it's practically ad-free at this moment so uh, it's kind of nice that there's a lot of people who write a lot of good content out there and it's the it's the curated content that that bubbles up to the surface and stuff so the the really good content um, is at the top it's been curated it's been vetted it's been read um, and uh, most of the stuff that's been vetted is you know well written and and that kind of thing so any of the uh, the flotsam and jetsam that might be posted on there doesn't get um, bubbled to the top where uh, where you can easily find it. I mean, it's out there, but uh, you'd have to dig for the crap. <laughs> um, and I have been uh, a top writer in the LGBTQ um, section of that site. Um, I write mostly about trans issues and being trans and stuff. Um, I have tried writing um, about being child-free, like I've done my YouTube videos and my most popular YouTube videos are still about me being child-free, um, but for some reason that topic just really isn't popular on that site, so I'm, I'm not really going to uh, focus on that. Uh, plus there's, you know, right now being child-free is much more accepted than it used to be. Um, it's no longer stigmatized like it used to be and that kind of thing, so I think it's just no longer that much of a hot topic like, like it once was. Um, whereas being trans, and since I am trans, and since I am transitioning, um, it is kind of more of a topical thing, and so it's getting me a lot more um, followers and reads on Medium um, and things, and so uh, I'm, I'm can kind of focused on, focused on that. There's a lot of areas where people could use a little bit more education on uh, for folks for being trans and things. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation out there of, um, about being trans. Um, and so I'll throw a link to my Medium profile um, down below as well. So if you want to check out my stuff and 
you know, if, if you like the site, if you check out Medium and you like it and subscribe, you know, you'll, you'll help those of us who are struggling writers out a little bit by throwing a few cents our way, so um, it would be appreciated. You know, and if, if you can't afford the five dollars a month, you know, hey, I understand. Not everyone can. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to push forward with my writing career more. My second novel um, has done a lot better than my first one um, and has driven sales for the first one as well, so um, I'm hoping with uh, coming out with a third one you know, that will help drive um, sales for all three better and that kind of thing. Uh, I am currently working, it's no, it's November right now, so I'm doing NaNoWriMo, and um, obviously with my surgery coming up tomorrow, I'm kind of like screeching to a halt for a few days, uh, but I'm hoping um, after about a week of recovery that I can at least start writing again. Um, it's going to take more than a week for me to recover from, from the surgery, but um, I'm hoping that I'll be at a good place to start writing again, at least within a week. Um, and I've been doing a lot of writing. I've, I've gotten up to 27,000 words um, now, and I'm, I'm hoping to get somewhere over 28,000, maybe 30,000 um, before I have my surgery tomorrow, so we'll see. Uh, it just depends on, on how long it takes me to, to get everything done uh, that I need to prep for today uh, before I, I'm out under tomorrow, so. Um, and in other news, just to go on a completely different tangent, but this is kind of like a, a, a life update type of a thing, um, is if you saw my last video that I posted, you'll know that uh, my dog Joey finally um, had to be euthanized. Um, he had been diagnosed with um, osteosarcoma. Um, he had a, a tumor on the, the right side of his skull um, that was literally eating away the bone. Uh, last, so it was like a year ago, um, over a year ago, so October of 2018 is when he was diagnosed with the oste osteosarcoma. Um, the, the tumor itself originally showed up like July, August is when we first found it, and it grew, it grew really fast. Um, got him in, we, I, I live where there's the, the Colorado State University um, Veterinary Hospital, it's one of the top hospital, veterinary hospitals in the country. And, um, and they have the, the, the best um, veterinary oncology department in the country. So, um, thankfully, I live close by there, so I was able to bring him in there. Um, he got the diagnosis, he got treatment, he had radiation and chemo, and the tumor shrunk uh, and, and actually disappeared, at least for a while. They said that they knew that they couldn't get 100% of the tumor, so they couldn't cure him. But they could get as much of it as possible and give him uh, uh, extended lifespan. Um, basically, if I hadn't treated him, he would have been gone within two or three months, and ha would have needed a lot of pain medication and a lot of, you know, uh, palliative care and things. And and it, he would have not had a good last couple of months of life. Um, by giving him the treatment, it actually got rid of the tumor. He had um, it got rid of his pain. Uh, it actually helped with the pain and everything. And he had almost an entire year of life still. And the only thing that was really sad um, when we when we had to finally put him down was the fact that um, he was still full of life. I mean, if it hadn't been for the tumors and everything, um, he was still bouncing around and wagging his tail and chasing after his toys and that kind of thing. But um, the tumor came back eventually, uh, uh, we kind of expected it would, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and more treatment wasn't going to help. Um, it, it, it would have kind of been diminishing returns at this point, and it would have been another twenty thousand dollars to treat him again. Um, with with only, you know, instead of giving him a year, he would, might have had a couple extra months or something, and, and so at that point it was like, yeah, it just is, at that point it just wasn't worth it. And then um, the cancer also got into his lymph nodes, which apparently is not a common thing to happen. Um, and his lymph started getting really big, and eventually it got to the point where it was like all around his neck, and it was threatening to cut off his esophagus. And so that was when it's like, okay, it's it, it's time now. I mean, he, other than, because he was on a lot of medications which helped with pain and that kind of thing, so other than having a lot of lumps on his head, um, he was, you know, his, his demeanor was actually just fine. He was eating, he was being active, um, he was relatively happy and everything and, and bouncing around and stuff. 
and so it really hurt to see how how active and, and lively he still was when he had to be put down but there really was not much that could be done at that point other than uh, and, and it was it was getting to the point where eventually it would have cut off his esophagus and, and then he would have needed an emergency euthanasia or something and it just it, it was time um, it was time for him to finally go um, I did an in-home euthanasia we have a, a service in town that I got and they they send out uh, a, vet uh, a veterinarian who comes in and um, they give him an initial uh, injection uh, just to kind of um, calm him down and, and get him relaxed and everything. And he was laying down, his head was in my lap, um, and we, my, uh, I had several friends who came over and they were with me and with us. Um, they were uh, friends that my, my dogs loved seeing every time they visited. Um, and so they were there and they were there to, to say goodbye to Joey. Um, and then the, um, the, the vet, he actually had a, um, a little, not like an IV, but like a, a, a what you would use for an IV to put an injection in, inside, but without the, the, the drip bag. Um, and he had that in his leg. And so when we were all ready, um, he just did the final injection. And then within a minute, um, he was gone. He was just like, he just kind of fell asleep. And, and that was the end of it. Um, you know, we all had a really good cry. <laughs> So yeah, they, they did a paw print um, for for his paw, and uh, and uh, so I got that as a memorial, and I, I have his ashes in an urn, and uh, I put his urn next to my husband's urn um, since he's been he's been gone almost four years now, <laughs> um, but yeah, so 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 Joey had to Joey had to go. I still have Lexi, um, and she's just as lively as her brother was. Yeah, I mean, she's nine years old, but she's a mutt, and she could easily have another seven, eight, nine years left uh, in her, depending on on health factors and things. But right now, she's she's healthy um, and uh, happy and, and energetic and everything. And so, um, for right now, it's just going to be her. Uh, obviously, I've got a surgery going on. I've got to recover from that and be healthy and everything. Um, and then I've got some traveling I need to do in the early part of next year once I'm recovered. Uh, and then once, once I've got all that out of the way, then I am going to start looking for a companion for Lexi. Um, starting with the, uh, the local um, Humane Society shelter. And uh, if I can't find one, because I need to find a dog that is compatible with Lexi. Lexi doesn't get along with all dogs. <laughs> so it's going to be a, a, a trial thing of like, we'll bring Lexi along and if she gets along, like, you know, a, a dog that, that fits what, you know, how I live my life and my, my lifestyle and everything and also is compatible with her <laughs> at the same time. Because I don't want to just get, I don't want to rescue just any dog I want. It, it needs to be the right dog to fit into the family. And so we'll start with the local Larimer County. If that doesn't work, then I'll start looking at um, area uh, rescue uh, organizations and things um, and, and spread out because I think you know, Joey and Lexi both we rescued them from a rescue that was all the way on the other side of Colorado uh, in Telluride and it was like a, a 400 mile drive to go get them so you know I, I will I will make the trek if, if necessary uh, in terms of trying to find the right dog uh, to fit uh, into my family and stuff so um, it'll be a process and, and I will go through it and um, hopefully uh, within like six months or so I'll, I'll have a, a second pup. Uh, I say pup, I, I call all dogs pups, um, but I, I actually don't want a puppy. I don't want a baby puppy. Um, I would like one that's at least six months old, preferably one or two years. Uh, I don't necessarily want a senior dog either. I already have one <laughs> who's, I mean, she's middle aged, but you know, she'll, she, she's going towards uh, being a senior, she's already getting like the, the, the weight on her muscle and stuff, so um, she will be a senior dog in a few years, and so I would prefer not to have two senior dogs at the same time. Um, so I, I would rather have a young but not um, baby uh, puppy um, to adopt and everything, and, and hopefully I can find one that's, you know, the right fit for us, so. Um, and uh, for now, she just gets a lot of extra treats and hugs and is getting spoiled rotten. 
Uh, I know she she's she's missing her brother. Um, her eating has been a little problematic, and it's been a struggle trying to get her to eat. Um, she is eating. It's not like she's not eating at all, but uh, I've had to mix up her food. I've had to change out. I ended up having to get rid of the food bowl. She wouldn't touch the food because she and her brother had the same food bowls, and she wouldn't touch them. Uh, wouldn't go near them. And so I'm like, all right, so I got rid of them. I got new bowls, brand new bowls and everything for her. Um, I've been trying out different foods and things because for some reason, the old food that she used to eat at the same with with her brother, the, the the food that they shared together, she won't touch that either. So I'm like, all right. I mean, I I'm thinking, you know, obviously she's grieving the loss of him, uh, but if I give her new stuff, she'll eat it. So I'm like, all right, fine. I will give you new things instead. Um, so that's uh, so that's where we're at with that. Um, and yeah, so just looking forward to getting my surgery done tomorrow and over with and looking forward to the holidays. I love the holidays. I'm one of those weird people that just loves... Uh, for me, and when I say holidays, it's, it's everything from Halloween all the way to New Year's. That's the holidays for me. So, and obviously it includes Christmas and there's my birthday in there and Thanksgiving and... Um, <laughs> everything, anything and everything else in between. I just, I just love this time of year. Um, I'm, I'm weird that way, but you can blame my grandmother because she's the one who made this time of year special for me, and I just have so many happy memories, and so it just, it makes me happy, and I love it. Um, and we'll see if, I'm not gonna do Vlogmas this year. I did it a couple years ago, um, but with me recovering from surgery and everything else, and having just finished another novel, because like I said, I'm doing NaNoWriMo, so I'm writing my third novel now. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just I, I'm just not going to be in a good headspace to do vlogging every day. Um, so I'm not going to do that this year. Um, we'll see what kind of things I do uh, with this channel next year. I will obviously keep making my transition updates and everything. Um, as you can tell, you know, my, my voice has continued to get deeper. I don't know if it's like at its lowest that it's going to go, um, or if it'll keep getting deeper for another year, but, because I'm, well, I'm almost a year and a half on testosterone now, so I probably only have maybe six months more of possible dropping of my voice, but it could actually be at its lowest at this point. Um, I'm really happy with where it's at. I, I, I like how it sounds and everything, so, um... It's, it's so much deeper than it used to be, and I just love it. And if you go back to any of my old videos, you can see the difference of, of how much my voice has changed. Um, I'm not losing my hair yet, uh, which I'm very happy with. That could still happen, so I've, I've got a, a box of Rogaine <laughs> sitting <laughs> in preparedness just in case it happens. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a little paranoid about, about losing my hair. Um, facial hair is still coming in. Obviously, you can't still can't see it that well, um, but it is there, um, and it is coming in thicker. But it's still, it, it's still, you still have to be pretty close up to, to really see it. So, um, one interesting change I've noticed is that my fingernails have gotten thicker. Like they're the reason I used to wear um, acrylic nails was because my fingernails were really, really, really thin and nothing I ever did thickened them, and so they broke really easily, and I was constantly having broken nails, and it's not like I even tried to grow them long or anything, they were just always broken, and they would hurt, and that kind of thing, so I started wearing the acrylic nails because that kind of reinforced my nails. And my fingernails now are ridiculously thick, I mean they're just, they're ridged, they're, there's like ridges on them now, especially on my thumbs, there's these big thick ridges, and they're, and they're, they're like, you know, they're, they're, as, they're as thick and substantial as my husband's used to be. So I'm like, okay, there's yet another benefit to having testosterone, is having stronger fingernails. I'm liking this. Um, so there is that. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really have a, a lot of other changes uh, other than what I've had at the, my one-year update, so... Um, fat redistribution continues to happen, but slowly. Um, hair continues to grow everywhere, <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, but yes, so wish me luck tomorrow, um, and I will stop rambling and let you get on with your day. If you're still watching, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, please go and check out my novels and check out my, my articles on Medium, 
and uh, if you can support, uh, that would be great. If you can't, I appreciate the fact that you're actually still watching. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care. <laughs> Bye.